Good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with The Trumpet for My People. Today is September 13th, 2021, and I want to bring you guys an update on the one-year anniversary of the Abraham Accords. And one thing that is coming um, out of what I'm searching here is that this is actually a two-day event that began today in New York, and then tomorrow they're going to be heading to Washington. And um, this article here, I've got a number of articles I'm going to share with you. I'll share all the links because each article gives a different perspective of, uh, of the agreement that they're making and of the, uh, of the format that they are following between, uh, between today and tomorrow. Israel's ambassador to the UN applauds the role the US has played in promoting the historic pact. Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, on Monday offered bipartisan praise to the Trump and Biden administrations for helping to nurture the Abraham Accords. The lesson is don't try to force anything on Israel. Erdan told I-24 News, senior U.S. correspondent Mike Wagenheim at a U.N. event in New York City marking the one-year anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the Jewish state and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain with later additions of Morocco and Sudan. The historic pact between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain was realized on September 15, 2020 during a White House signing ceremony. The Abraham Accords create momentum and it's up to our leaders and our people to work on that to build for establishing peace and also for bringing hope and bringing an end to all kinds of violence, extremism and wars. Omar Hilale, Morocco's ambassador to the UN, told Wagenheim at the event held at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in Lower Manhattan. Nearly 70 UN ambassadors participated in the event which was co-hosted by the permanent missions of Israel, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Morocco to the United Nations. Okay, 70 UN ambassadors. Anytime they use the number 70, it is a representation of the many, the entire world. 70 nations, 70 UN ambassadors, the many. Okay, covenant with the many. Ambassadors from the U.S., UAE, Bahrain, and Morocco all took the stage to deliver remarks along with Erdogan. On Tuesday, the celebrations head to Washington for an event hosted by the Abraham Accords Institute for Peace, which is made up of senior government officials who were involved in the agreement. The anniversary tomorrow... The anniversary event on Tuesday will bring together the architects of the deal from the Trump administration, including Jared Kirshner and Avi Berkowitz. So this tomorrow then uh, in Washington, D.C., Jared Kushner and Avi Berkowitz will be attending and participating in the uh, in the event. Officials from the Biden administration are also expected to attend the celebrations. Now there's one other piece of uh, information I want to share with you. Obviously this is a declaration of peace and safety. It's a declaration amongst the many but okay there's a piece of information here that came out right here that I want to share with you. Okay. Watch this. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. refused to use term Abraham Accords at first anniversary ceremony. Okay, so we have people from the Trump administration. We have people from the Biden administration. We have people from uh, Israel, Egypt, Morocco, Sudan, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, okay, but the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., which is the Biden administration, okay, refused to use the term Abraham Accords at the first anniversary ceremony. 
So let's read about this and see what this is all about. Okay, During the one-year anniversary commemorative event for the Abraham Accords, the Biden administration representative refused to call the agreement by its name. At the event held at the Jewish Heritage Museum in New York City, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas Greenfield was representing the Biden administration. Obviously, he, the... Uh, the people in the Biden administration who is presently uh, in the office of president of the United States, the people from his administration are the UN representatives. So we have the U.S. ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas Greenfield, representing the Biden administration. She was joined by the UN ambassadors of Israel, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, and Morocco. During her speech, at the event, the U.S. ambassador referred to the accords as the normalization agreements. And she simply said the accords, leaving out any mention of the name given to it at, its, at the time of its signing by former President Donald Trump. Following the event, veteran Hamodia reporter Ruben Borchad asked the ambassador that did not use the words Abram Accords when she gave her speech. The ambassador responded, I didn't recognize that I didn't. It was not intentional. Then they asked her, when they asked her, did anyone ask you to not use that word? She refused to answer. Let's take a look at this uh, video here and see this interview that took place. Hi, Madam Ambassador. I'm Ruben Borsha from Home of the Newspaper. I'm wondering why you did not use the word Abraham Accords in your speech? I didn't recognize that I did. It was not intentional? <laughs> Thank you. Did anyone ask you not to use that word? Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Has anyone asked you not to use the word Abraham Accords? There's one minute. Um, what do you make of the uh, Ambassador uh, Thomas Greenfield refusing to say the word Abraham Accords today? I, I didn't recognize. I think the, the fact that uh, she was here and she praised uh, the uh, Accords and uh, she said that they are committed to, uh, you know, helping to expand them to other countries and make sure that uh, they will be implemented. I think that's, uh, that's fine with me. Do you feel the Biden administration is as committed to uh, Abraham Accords at, by any name as the Trump administration as was? As an ambassador, I don't intend to give grades and to uh, the administration. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Okay, so we have two different perspectives here. Uh, the lady said that uh, it was not intentional, uh, that she did not say the words, but then they asked her, if anyone asked her not to use that word, she didn't give an answer to that. Uh, according to this man, well, the Biden administration, they were there, and that's that's good enough. That, that she was there, they said they are supporting it, and that's good enough. Let's go on and read the end of this. The signing of the Abraham Accords, which is seen as a major milestone, during the Trump administration was a joint statement between the State of Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States of America reached on August 13, 2020. Subsequently, the term was used to refer collectively to its agreements between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, the Israel-United Arab Emirates Normalization Agreement, and Bahrain, respectively, the Bahrain-Israel Normalization Agreement. The statement marked the first public normalization of relations between an Arab country and Israel since that of Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. The original Abraham Accords were signed by the Emirati Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Zayed Al-Nayin and Bahraini Foreign Minister 
Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and U.S. President Donald Trump on September 15, 2020, at the South Lawn of the White House in Washington, D.C. The accords were ne negotiated by Jared Kushner and Avi Berkowitz. Okay. So is this some type of stand that the Biden administration is going to make uh, connected to the Biden administration and connected to the U.N. ambassador who, for some reason, refused to use the term Abraham Accords at the first anniversary ceremony? Okay. Okay, and then there's another article here by uh, Israel National News. And I'll leave a link for this one and this other article which is coming out that I just wanted to show you the title of this because this is an interesting um, way to put this. But they are calling this the new normal. Assessing the Abraham Accords one year on. The new normal. Okay. So... I just wanted to share this. This uh, this event already took place today. You can read about this and search online more for this. And then tomorrow, I think that tomorrow is the most uh, important event. Actually, Jared Kushner is going to be there, and Avi Berkowitz, who were the founders and the architects of the Abraham Accords under Donald Trump. Okay. So I just wanted to give you guys an update when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. And then we have the Biden administration not willing to uh, even use the term Abraham Accords. Is this some type of canceling of the agreement under the Biden administration? This is what we have to watch for. I pray you guys are blessed. This is Steve Fletcher with the trumpet for my people. The sign of his coming revealed.